Hi everybody. It's time for another weekly walk through my yard, through my gardens. This is a day earlier than I usually do it. I usually like to film on a Friday, but today is a Thursday. It's so just cool and overcast today. And tomorrow I think we might be getting some storms a lot of the day. So I thought that maybe I should just come out. It's the afternoon, so I apologize about any extra traffic noise. I also usually try to get out pretty early in the morning, but it is about three o'clock in the afternoon. So you might hear a lot of cars going by, but I um, wanted to give you just a quick update and show you how things are doing this week. Everything is still looking very beautiful and not fizzling out too much yet. We've had some pretty cool temperatures, thankfully. I know a lot of you have not, and I'm so sorry if you're in that category, but we have been fairly cool with a decent amount of rain we're supposed to get. We got some last night and are supposed to get some more tonight and tomorrow, so that is a plus. Our grass is looking pretty green with a few dead patches that we will need to reseed in the fall but overall it's looking pretty good so i'm gonna just kind of walk you through my borders quick and um show you what they're looking like right now in almost the end of august which is crazy to me My limelight prime hydrangea is getting prettier and prettier by the day. It's turning this beautiful kind of rosy pink color. This one is really pretty. Just a beautiful pink. The blooms are just so big. They're feeling kind of papery right now, which would be a perfect time to cut them but I don't think I want to cut them. I don't have a whole lot of blooms yet. This is a fairly young plant. It's only on its second year, so I'm just gonna leave them on the plant for now. Maybe I'll cut them as we get closer into fall to bring them in for drying. I really enjoy using hydrangeas, especially around Christmas time in some different arrangements out on my porch, so. I'll probably eventually cut them, but just not yet. But I'm really loving that Limelight Prime this year. And I have a Dahlia blooming for you. One flower. <laughs> I see a few more buds coming down there and up there. But that one flower is super beautiful. I love that color. So pretty. Coming down this way, I have some zinnias that are starting to pop on this side. This side gets less sun than the other side, so not quite as many um, zinnias are blooming yet. The rabbits have been leaving these alone. Thankfully, I just saw a really big hawk fly through my neighbor's yard over there. I don't know if I can get it or not. Oh my goodness, it was huge. Sitting over on that fence, you can kind of see its tail, but it scared me. It was huge. Anyway, back to to the plants. These are my purple pillar Rose of Sharon that are still doing really well, blooming prolifically. The bees and the butterflies and the hummingbirds. I wake up in the morning and see hummingbirds on them. Just really love them. And they should give me flowers all the way through even October. They won't bloom this much, but they will continue to bloom. 
are so pretty. Coming back down here, we have my herb pot. It's overflowing. <laughs> Some strawberries. I'm planning to move these to a pot next year. We just get eaten by the rabbits too much. This is one of my caramel hookahs that I put in a couple of weeks ago. Really enjoying that orangey color for fall as we transition. A couple of daisies still blooming and I do see some of my black eyed Susans starting to fizzle out a little bit, but they're still looking pretty good. Coming down this way. See a big jalapeno that I need to pick right there not a great season for jalapenos for me I think it's just where I placed the plants they just didn't get enough Sun where I put them other years I had hundreds of jalapenos and they just got more Sun where they were elephant ear a little um not sure why that leaf's curling up so much like that but really enjoying the elephant years this year Some more heuchera and cat mint it's putting on a little bit of flowers but not a whole lot since i cut it back they bloom that's the cat's pajamas and bloom beautifully in the springtime early early summer can't get enough of these raspberry ripple zinnias so just blooming their heads off <laughs> I don't even really have to deadhead them I barely deadheaded them I have a Powa wildberry comb flower which had another one on the other side that the rabbits destroyed. Some more cat mints, and one of my favorite combinations this year with the lamb's ear and mystic illusion dahlia. Really loving that purple foliage against all of the green and this caramely color of the hookara. The lamb's ear, Helen Bonstein is just taking off and looking super, super beautiful. My little lime hydrangea. All my staking is still doing its job. Also turning a really nice kind of mauve pink. I would say that's one of the differences between the little lime and the limelight prime is the limelight prime is a little bit of a brighter pink than this little lime. Oh, it feels so nice out right now. It's so cool and kind of breezy. Super, super nice. Look at this patch of raspberry ripple zinnia. <laughs> it is going crazy. I found two more seed packets of this at my one of my local stores, the mill, so I grabbed those up for next year. I just think these are fantastic. More elephant ear. More wild berry and lucara. There's a jalapeno plant tucked in here with a couple more that I could pick. My son, my one son and husband love jalapeno poppers, so I need to make more of those for them. And a beautiful patch of zinnias. I'm super excited about these. I cut a bouquet. Um, couple days ago in one of my videos but these are just looking really nice right now 
they're probably three to four feet tall at this point. They come above my waist and I'm 5'4". But I see lots of butterflies on these. Bees. Just really enjoying those. My David Howard Dahlia tucked back in there. Obviously, I wasn't planning for how big the zinnias would get, but it's still not blooming for me. So I guess I need to wait a little longer. I have some wee white hydrangeas reblooming. You can go and cut back your wee whites. Limettas, they're all reblooming hydrangeas. So if you cut them early enough in the season, they will give you a second flush of buds. Looking back, my red maple, and just giving you another look at the bed. It's that just beautiful time of year where we're slowly but kind of quickly transitioning into fall. You can just feel it in the air and by listening to the crickets and just all of the different sounds that signal that fall is on its way. And I happen to really like fall. I do not like winter, but I do like fall. So I'm really excited for the change of season right now. Let's go take a look at this other side. Our Tonto Crepe Myrtle is still looking super beautiful. Loving it. It's looking really good this year. All of those watermelon buds. Just can't get enough of them. Dahlia is looking gorgeous still. This one has been such a prolific bloomer. This is the Molina Fleur Dahlia. It's probably about five feet tall and it is really starting to rain. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna get through this whole tour right now. I may have to come back. But it has just bloomed and bloomed and bloomed for probably over a month now. Under my crepe myrtle are the orchid, vigorous orchid sun patients. Really doing well. And I have the crepe myrtle flanked by two limettas. And I think I'm gonna take a quick break because it's pouring rain. So I will be back. Let's see if we can try this again. It's still spritzing a little bit, but now the sun's out. So I'm looking to see if I can find a rainbow. If I find one, I'll show it to you. But anyway, that was a really quick passing shower. Hopefully I can get through without another one coming along. I think I was showing you my Limetta hydrangeas. I did go back in and snip off some of these um, old crusty brown blooms that they get later in the summer and left some of the ones on that are not quite as brown and crispy and I have one that rebloomed right here but I don't think I see any others coming yet I'm not sure if they will or not this doesn't these don't get a ton of sun so I don't know if they get enough sun to rebloom this late in the season but we shall see. Walking down, we have the winter gem boxwood hedge all along the front, and I really love how full this side is looking. This is was kind of my goal for both sides. I have some sunflowers growing in the back that are looking pretty good. These are the Pro Cut Gold Light which again, I had to battle the rabbits and animals for. I 
have one tucked in back there that I think I'm gonna move to this other side because I have one that fizzled out on me. This is the Mystic Illusion. Not Mystic Illusion, I'm sorry. Mystic Spires Blue Salvia, is that right? I always seem to get that name wrong. That bee is enjoying the salvia. There are bees on this from morning to night. But I just really like how this salvia and the zinnias are just kind of spilling over the boxwood. I think that's really pretty. And I believe that these zinnias are all the lily put mix. I have a pretty big jalapeno plant tucked back in there. This is the one that's doing the best. I've already been picking off of this one. <laughs> Way down in there, I have an anemone that again, clearly I was not planning very well for when I put these zinnias here. Some baby pumpkins. I had been trying to grow uh, purple hyacinth bean vine up this obelisk and every time the vines got any size on them the rabbits would just come and eat them right off and it didn't matter. I, I sprayed, I, I used the um, liquid fence spray religiously and they just would come through and chomp the vines right in half so that didn't quite go as planned. These are all Baneri's giant mix zinnia that are getting ready to pop here. And just a quick little update if you saw a previous video that I made with a rabbit. It was like a rabbit sonar device that I had back in there. It didn't work. <laughs> I sent it right back to Amazon. I had put some, I think I tried to grow right back in here, some new seedlings for the hyacinth bean vine and I had string um, tied on this obelisk and the rabbits just came and ate it all, even the string, even though that device was right there. So I sent it back. And really the most effective thing that I found for this year with all of the baby rabbits um, has been just straight up garlic powder. I guess they need something really strong taste-wise. Smells don't affect them, apparently. So the garlic powder finally started to keep them away a little bit more. You can see I have jalapeno that's done for <laughs> from the rabbits. And this is an anemone. Looks like it's actually maybe going to get a bud right there. This is the fall in love sweetly anemone proven winners. And this side did not turn out like the other. These are my zinnias on this side. <laughs> Pretty sad looking with some um, Mystic Spires Blue Salvia again and my fizzled out sunflower and that one the rabbits got. So I think I'm going to transfer that one from the other side over here. But I still have three left. And then just a, I have a coneflower also on the other side that, again, rabbits eat, um, tucked back in there. This is the Summer Song Fire Pinch. And just a patio tomato, still waiting on those to ripen. With some cucumbers, baby cucumbers that are looking a little rough right now. I think I see a couple coming down in there. Purple basil is starting to take off finally. So yeah, I'm just really enjoying this side. This section over here is definitely more of the feel that I'm going for on both sides with some taller perennials, dahlias, things like that in the back and just kind of a progressive um, placement of plants as you move to the front, taller to shorter, and just kind of overflowing and brimming with color. 
and blooms spilling over the boxwoods. That's my ultimate goal over here. But I am enjoying everything in it. And everything in this garden is looking super beautiful right now. So let's take a walk to my back area, see what's going on back there. I'm just walking you past my crepe myrtle and giving you a glimpse at my denim and lace Russian siege. Still just rocking it and looking amazing. Blooming from May, I think, until now. It will bloom until October. It just stays nice and tidy and compact and doesn't flop, even in the heaviest of rains. So really enjoying that. And then we'll walk by my row of green giants here and down into our back area which is more shady because of the river, river birch trees. These are our neighbor's trees. So I get to garden in sun, part sun, and shade which is kind of nice. Let's go see what's going on. This is a big leaf begonia that I just, I had put in a, a hanging basket and hung it on this um, shepherd's hook right here, but it was way too heavy and I never repotted it. So that's where it lives for the summer is right there. And I put in these two flats of impatience that I'm still really enjoying with our obelisks. We built these a couple of years ago. Hopefully I get to paint them white this fall. And I have some pink, pink, pink clematis growing back in here somewhere that next year I'm sure will take off a little bit more. Oh man, it's down there. I think the bunnies have definitely had a heyday with that. The one on the other side is a little bit bigger. A lot bigger, actually. I see butterflies on these and bees. Not, a whole, not as many bees, but definitely butterflies fluttering around. These are three Annabelle hydrangeas that are doing fairly well. The river birch trees, I think, really do protect them from the heavy rain. So that's, that's a good tip. Put them under some trees to protect them. This is the all gold Japanese forest grass. I'm hoping these begin to grow nice and big so I can move them around and throughout this border. And still have many goals back here to fill it out with different perennials and shrubs. Maybe an evergreen hedge around the lining of our fence, the outside or the inside of our fence. This is the pink meat clematis that you can see is quite tall and I should have put some like fishing line or something on here to let it grow up. So I will definitely have to do that next year. And this is just a look back on the sunny border. I'll flip you around and show you um, behind me around our Autumn Brilliance um, service berry back here. We have this Autumn Brilliance service berry tucked back in here. I really wanted something with really nice fall color to kind of offset 
the river birches and these are some burning bushes beside me. They're my neighbors and then my neighbors behind me have a red maple. So I wanted something that would kind of contrast nicely in the fall with all of that. And it really does put on beautiful bright orange leaves. The leaves turn a beautiful bright orange in the fall. So I'm really pleased with that. It's kind of a wonky shape. It came to us in a kind of a weird shrubby form. It wasn't even really a nice shrubby form. And I tried to kind of limit up into a single trunk, but it, it does kind of have a funny shape to it now. These are elegans and an enemy hiding in there. I really have to move that. We Hasta and the Blue Halcyon and Dime Shad Sh what is this? Shadow Land Diamond Lake. I can never get that name right either. It's a proven winner's Hasta. It's really actually looking really nice. It's really big. Coming around are the autumn, autumn brilliance ferns with some wild berry hookara and I've just repeated that pattern on this side. So lots of goals back here to fill it out and kind of turn it into a lush, um, kind of shadier border. But for now, I'm enjoying how everything is looking. I'll walk you down quick past our skip laurel. This is our skip laurel hedge around our hot tub and another um, green giant hedge. Let's see what's happening down this way. Coming in through our other side gate, we have two incredible hydrangeas. I've showed you before that are looking a little rough with, from rabbits and some fungal issues. <laughs> Hoping for better years in the future. And we have a purple Laura Petalum right here with a gorgeous purple color. We do try to keep this trimmed. We trimmed it in probably late spring and it's already putting on a ton of growth. These things grow super fast but I don't want to trim it again because if you trim it at this point you may trim off some of the buds for next year for the spring bud buds and I don't want to ruin that show so we're just gonna leave it be. Oh, I actually see, <laughs> that's funny. I see a flower blooming up here. This is what they look like when they bloom. And they cover the whole, the whole bush. It's really pretty. Coming back. through our side gate here. I have a gorgeous patch of zinnias blooming. Love them. Worked hard for these also from the rabbits. Lots of pollinators all over them. I cut from these a couple days ago as well and they're, st they're, they're already putting on so many flowers. Zinnias have got to be one of my favorite flowers. They just almost take my breath away whenever I see them. There's so many different colors and shapes. Some are double petals and some are more single. And I just love all the color. 
just don't think that I could. I've, I've thought about illuminating some colors in my garden, but I, I just think there's too many beautiful colors and I just, I think I would miss all the color if I just tried to stick to, you know, a certain color palette with like just pinks and purples and light yellows and that kind of thing. I just think that I would really miss it. So I'm trying to include as many colors as I can around my gardens. And a couple days ago as well in my my last video, if you want to go check it out, I put these Denver daisies in. This is just kind of a tempor temporary holding spot for them. I'm hoping that these will come back for me next year. They're actually a biennial, so they reseed themselves, but I think that they're pretty prolific reseeders, so I'm hoping to have these for many years to come, but I found these for a dollar a piece at the one of the greenhouses that I visited in the Lancaster area a couple of days ago. I couldn't believe they were a dollar, so I picked up three, and I'm just kind of going to see how they do in my garden and perform, and maybe add more in the future if they do really well. but I'm really enjoying all this color in front of the backdrop of our, these are Dragon Lady Hollies against our deck. We have our hose link tucked in back there. And coming over on this side is where I have three Viburnum. These are Sweet Talker Viburnum pretty pink flowers in the spring, about 10 feet tall, three to five feet wide, and some blue azure radum, really doing well. Definitely, this is rabbit resistant, <laughs> definitely adding this next year for sure. Oh, and here's the delphinium that I showed you, I think maybe in my last garden tour. This is the third time they're growing back after rabbits have gotten them and I only actually see two coming back. The others look like they've been dug up possibly by maybe the chipmunks. <laughs> chipmunks and rabbits and squirrels are my biggest problem. So that is a recap for the end of August. I can't believe that we're going to be in September soon, but I'm really enjoying the cooler weather. I hope that you all are having some decent weather, and if not, that you get some soon. I hope that you have a great day, and I will talk to you in the next one. All right, bye.